Good evening. What a crazy, sad day. A day that will go down as a dark one in the, in the long history of America. We've all sat today glued to the pictures of Trump supporters breaching the Capitol, fighting with police, shouting in the chambers of Congress or flagrantly popping off a selfie as they sit with their feet up in the government's offices. Then, under the pretense of trying to calm the situation, their hero, the president, released a message this afternoon to tell those supporters that you're special and we love you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to even imagine his treatment or response to those people if they had been wearing Black Lives Matter hats instead of red MAGA ones. And as I watched all the networks and I was, I was flipping through the, the channels, all of the commentators, they, they kept crying out the, the same thing. They kept saying, but this is America. How is this America? And it, and it felt sad and it felt wrong, but mainly it felt hopeless. And I, and I got to thinking, I thought, well, I hope when the dust settles and we reflect on what's happened on this awful day, that we still have hope. Because I, I think if there is one thing we can have after the last month in this country, it's hope. You know, as an outsider, growing up in England, I, I used to look to America as this, this, this beacon of, of light and, and possibility, a place where anything can happen, a place where you'd be lucky to work, a place where, where many people that, that I knew used to fantasize about living in, a place which gives an individual more opportunity than they would get elsewhere, yet cares for their fellow man. And yet, you know, today people across the world would, would have looked at these pictures from Washington and they would have wondered what on earth has happened to this great country. But I truly believe, and make no mistake, that they know that the America that they admire still exists. They know that the America that so many aspire to will be back. It's just been hijacked by a lunatic and his crazy army for the last four years. But that's about to end, because in two weeks, on those same steps, where that mob fought and pushed past police, Joe Biden will be sworn in as the president of the United States. You know, in, in two weeks, on those same steps where that mob fought and pushed past the police, Kamala Harris will be sworn in as the vice president of the United States. In two weeks, on, on those same steps where, where that mob fought and pushed past police, those two new senators will walk up to take their seats in Congress. You know, a 33-year-old Jewish man and an African-American pastor whose mother once picked cotton in fields and now she picked her son in the polls as the new senator. And in two weeks on those same steps where that mob fought and pushed past the police, the people who encouraged and instigated that violence, Donald Trump, his children, Rudy Giuliani, they're all gonna need a tourist pass to get in because they've lost the presidency, they've lost the house, and now they've lost the Senate. And their ally, Lindsey Graham, was right after all when he tweeted, if we nominate Trump, we will get destroyed and we will deserve it. Today was their last dance at the worst party any of us have ever been to. So if you can, have hope. You've seen in, in this past few weeks in America that voting counts. Change is coming. Science is real. Vaccines are on the way. I, I really do believe that there are better times ahead. Except for the guy who came to the protest dressed as every member of the village people. <laughs> I don't know if better times are ahead for him. I mean, Ian, what is that guy's story? Who would, who would think, what are you doing today? Going to a protest, what are you gonna wear? I thought I'd wear this. Man, they canceled Burning Man this year and that guy's been spinning out ever since. This was the only place <laughs> he could end up. Well, look, we all woke up 
to much better news this morning. So we'd like to talk about that. We would, because I mentioned earlier the Democratic candidates won both Georgia runoff races last night, which means that the Democrats have officially taken control of the Senate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in one of the races, Democratic challenger Raphael Warnock defeated incumbent Republican Kelly Leffler. The historic win makes Warnock Georgia's first black senator. And so far, Trump's supporters are taking it really well. His victory was a truly <laughs> historic moment that the Reverend got to enjoy for three whole hours this morning. I mean, by the way, judging by her appearance, I'm going to assume that when Kelly Leffler heard she lost... Her immediate reaction was just to go and speak to the manager. <laughs> <laughs> and this is fun. Georgia's other newly elected senator, John Orsoff, is only 33 years old, making him the first millennial senator. I can't but 33 years old. It feels odd for me to be 11 years older than a senator. Mm-hmm. I feel like I need to grow up pretty quick. I started a podcast at the age of 33. I feel terrible about myself right now. <laughs> I mean, 33 years. Joe Biden has been running for president longer than he's been alive. <laughs> but electing a millennial is good news. This means the Senate will finally have someone who can set up that wireless printer. And here's the thing, people online have noticed that Orsov has some pretty nerdy tweets from the past, like this one, where he wrote, Pitchfork Media, looking forward to your write-up of the new Imagine Dragons album. <laughs> what? It's a big change. He's tweeting about Imagine Dragons, whereas most of the other senators have been around since the days when there were actual dragons. <laughs> I think it should be a blanket rule that if you've ever tweeted to Pitchfork, about an Imagine Dragons album, you shouldn't be allowed to decide what people's healthcare looks like. <laughs> but my favourite thing that John Orsov tweeted was a link to Anime Les Mis. Look at that. I mean, if this guy can bridge the gap between two completely different nerd cultures, imagine what he's going to be able to do for America. You know, there it is, right there. That's the little sliver of hope that we're all looking for.